Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we're returning to Rule the Waves 2, where we've pit left, left off last time uh, where, <laughs> by looking at our carrier. So we've just started building two carriers uh, from the Biscay fleet uh, class. But in the meantime, so if we do open this design, we've seen that uh, we have just gotten, just after trying to build these things, or starting to build these things, we've gotten a new level of torpedo technology. And you know what? I think we want to go ahead with the better torpedo technology, and that's just what we're going to do down here. So, of course, that should also be checked, so that's very nice to see. And yeah, we do not need to dial up the weight here a little bit, but I think this is a well worthwhile upgrade. Our carriers, the primary threat to our carriers is enemy aircraft. And the primary threat of enemy aircraft in this time period, at least, are torpedo bombers. Um, which is, is, I think, a little bit of a misnomer, so they'd be torpedo craft uh, or aircraft coming in from the side, dropping their torpedoes and potentially attacking us. So, yeah, I think this is a fine change. We could, by the way, uh, still upgrade to better guns, uh, but I don't think the role of our guys here will be to have guns. So, uh, we're going to call these things actually the Lubang class um, after the first carrier battle um, that we've fought. So that should be nice. Yeah, it's gonna cost us a little bit of money, about six million over here, and well, at least four months or so of three million investment. So yeah, that was very significant. So yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. On the other hand, we are gonna uh, scrap the Biscay over here and the Ranger. So scrap that, and that should be okay. Means we are earning some money again. That's of course very temporal, so I don't think that's gonna last too long. We're also, I think, reconstructing or building, actually, the Tunis class ships over here. And at that point, we might then retire the Oakland classes because they are costing us a fair amount of money, actually. Um, what if I put you to the active fleet? Well, that probably wouldn't change anything, right? No, because you are still based somewhere else. These things are very, very old, and, and I don't think they're very worthwhile anymore. So. Foreign station is probably much the only thing that they can do. Let's try to move them back towards the east coast, see what's going to happen. If we can, maybe scrap them already. Otherwise, we'll be waiting for the Tunis class, uh, which is our light cruiser design for colonial duty. So that's okay. We're going to make the national him, uh, national hero lighter than now. That doesn't really mean anything. We are very close to war, I have to say, over here especially against Germany. We should probably invest a little bit more in intelligence against them. Do we have a lot of ships in the reserve fleet? We do actually have a couple of them are in reserve status. Poor crew quality. All of you guys, you are destroyers. Do you still decent-ish destroyers? The Barry class. Do we need to re redesign you? You are a little bit overweight already. Don't think there's much that we can do with you. Could just give you a paint job simply to upgrade you. But then again, I don't think you'll be really there for more than the next war. So if we are getting in war against Germany and maybe Britain and maybe France, I think what we should actually do is take a look at our bases and specifically Northern Europe. And there I'm looking at Starbung. I think we should expand the naval, uh, the air base over here. Oh, we can't. We've also got Norvik and Bergen. Norvik and Bergen are in our hands, and they would be based where? Sorry, not this one. This one, Norvik and Bergen. I, I don't think there will be any raids at Norvik. So, um, you know what? Can we actually drop this? We cannot. We can only reduce the air group in in Norvik. Thank goods. But you know what, they're not that costly, so I think this is going to be fine. Tunis, we could also expand that one, but I don't expect us to send too many ships there, so... Yeah, I think we're going to be alright. Next turn, then. Independence is commissioned. That's very, very lovely. And we've got a dive bomber ready for operational service. Um, and at that point, I think we want to take a look at our air groups. So the Saratoga has currently um, about 20 fighters, sorry, 40 fighters, uh, and about 40 torpedo bombers. What I think what we can do over here is change the role of these guys to actually be dive bombers. Let's see whether they are going to be any good. Um, I don't know exactly whether they will be doing that great, 
But you know what? Let's let's see. And the same over here. We're going to change the role of these guys to dive bombers. Overall, we should check briefly here what's the difference of the torpedo bomber compared to the dive bomber. Uh, the dive bomber is much faster, a lot faster actually. It has uh, well, basically the same range, maybe a little bit worse. It can carry a worse bomb load, uh, but I think it's going to be a lot more accurate. Uh, on that, at least going forward in, in the mid sort of term. We've got the Lexington, sorry, the Constitution and the Independence class battleships. I don't think you need any refit or anything of the sort, so, you know, these are good ships. Could do a little bit more AA, but I think it's fine. We don't need to do too much there. Uh, what we should check on over here is, let's reduce the naval guns um, a little bit the priority over here because I think I want to have a couple of other things first. Right, that seems to be reasonable still. Ooh, no, of course we do not have enough ships on foreign station now that the Oakland has arrived, so you know what, we can send it to a foreign station and that one as well. And that should be okay. Do we want to have more budget? Yes, of course we want more budget, even if it's going to increase tensions. We are running a 6 million surplus, but that's soon going to change uh, once we do get the Lubang. New fighter. It's faster than our fastest. Yes, and we do want to go to the build screen and build the Lubang. There we go. Yes, it's going to, call the, going to be called the Lubang. And we are still generating a profit. So you know what? We are going to build another ship of the Lubang class and we're going to call it the Biscay after the second very important carrier battle that we won uh, at some point. And that does actually leave us with some money. And at that point I'm going to build another ship and that's going to be another of the Tunis class. Uh, we should actually change these names because they are not what I want anymore. Uh, basically for our colonial ships we should pick names of colonial cities. It's a slight deviation to, to our normal uh, naming change, so we've got the colon class. So I think this is going to be called the Manila. And what else have we got? You know, we could we could call it the the uh, Oslo class. I think that's a very fine choice. So we're going to get get over here, and we are going to change the name of this ship to the Oslo. So one of our colonies, Norway, very lovely, very lovely country actually. Independence has finished her working up, so that's nice to see. We're losing a million bucks every turn, but I think that's going to be all right. Soon we might want to have to reactivate our fleet, though. Better 9-inch guns, that's uh, interesting. Improves pilot survival survivability, that's lovely. Do you want Institute and Air Search Rescue? This will improve wartime, pilot wartime survival, but it will increase air-related maintenance. Uh, this is a one-time choice. I don't think we should do this. I think air maintenance will be such a big part of our budget um, that this is going to be a little bit too much. Hmm. Tensions are increasing here a little bit. And you know what? That I think does mean we can and should be building up, well firstly, the airbase in Stavanger, but also the airbase down here in Kinchang Bay, and potentially the one in Manila. These are the main areas where we'd be focusing off against enemies. So over here, over here, and over there. Could also think about Tunis, but for now I think we are fine. No, we will not be selling. <laughs> we're certainly not be selling uh, torpedo protection for to the Japanese. Radar and electronics. Ooh, that's very lovely. So I don't think we have that yet, and I would like to get this on here. Radar, what is that? Okay, so we don't have it yet, but we are getting closer to it, so that's very, very good to see. Right, you are still building. It's going to take a while to do that. Our shipbuilding industry can now decrease building times considerably. Does that apply to these ships, though? It's considered about tensions leading to war. We should safeguard our... So who do we think is the most likely enemy? I'm going to call it the Soviet Union. Hmm, okay, very nice. Better armor, always good to see. Yeah. Would we have actually the range to attack the Soviets anywhere? Well, not here, not here. That's a little bit unfortunate, but we could block them in, in their home waters. 
I'm very afraid they do have a lot of aircraft though. National data, national aircraft 270. Well, that's a significant number. Okay, next turn. Um, Ireland. Huh, so they are occupying Ireland. Look at that. No, no, no. I don't, I don't want to get that less budget. Yeah, some, some. Okay, so we are going to enter war very soon. So we're going to call on the mobilization here and that's fine. Uh, we are also going to go to doctrine and we're going to issue an elite pilot training. Uh, because I think that would be very lovely. And yeah, so all of our ships are now working up. Uh, a lot of them still have very bad crew quality, but I think that's fine. Do you want to think about maybe building a couple of more um, corvettes over here? Maybe we should also... No, we don't really need to rebuild them. Maybe they're not even going to survive the war. Um, but I think we should build a couple of these guys. So show all the designs and sort by type. And we're going to go to Landford over here. And let's build at least four more of those. Yeah, it's going to take a year or so, but they might be helpful. Next turn. Hmm. Prestige and tensions. War against the US and Great Britain. So here we are, a small engagement, it's only small, size small, um, of the Battle of uh, of the of Maine, so let's basically accept that, the British are going to refuse, which is very lovely. Look at that, tensions are also extremely high with the Soviet Union and the French, so yeah, let's have a look at the enemy forces disposition, so of course the British do have a lot of forces all over the place really, yeah, really all over the place, uh, but especially in Europe and North America. In North America, speaking of, uh, we do of course want to rob the British of their last bases, especially here Halifax and St. John. So I think Halifax would be a very tempting target. No, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do Halifax. Can I do Halifax, please? This one? Nova Scotia or New Brunswick? I also have Bermuda. But this here is our home area so we are going to set the invasion target to New Brunswick I think that's going to be very lovely so let's look at the forces disposition over here we've got five battleships two battle cruisers the Brits do have five battleships and or cruisers and a carrier so they do actually have a carrier over here can't we see that over here yeah I think we should so yeah overall they've got ten capital ships we only have seven on the other hand we have got two carriers they have only got one we are building two more They've got a lot more light carriers though. No heavy cruisers. Significantly less light cruisers. About half our tonnage. A lot less destroyers as well. And corvettes. They have an enormous amount of submarines though. Okay, so what we're going to need to do then is take all of our corvettes over here. And set you to trade protection. 29 ships. We are providing all of the anti-submarine warfare capabilities that I think we need. That's very hard to read though. Right, and then we've got uh, further choices to make. So, in terms of destroyers, I don't think we need all of these guys here ready. We've got a lot of guys on the southeast coast actually. Hmm, interesting. We've also got you in the Caribbean. I don't think that's appropriate. Let's yeah, let's let's move you back towards home home waters, because I think that's where most of the battles are going to be, and I do want you there. Both of our battle, uh, both of our aircraft carriers are ready over there. Then we've got all of the Raleigh classes, which are our most modern light cruisers, and then progressively older ships over here, including you guys who are on foreign station. Yeah, I think, I think it's fine to keep all of our ships concentrated uh, because they are a much too strong enemy for us to take on. We could also move forces here into Northern Europe, force them to be a little bit more dispersed there. Uh, but I don't think that's the way to go over here. Do we want to send some destroyers on anti-submarine warfare duty? Yeah, let's, you know what, let's get all of you guys to trade protection. I think that's fine, that, that should give us more and submarine warfare capabilities against this enormous amount of uh, British British submarines. 
Ooh, a new fighter by Boeing. So that could replace the Martin Fireball, which has been our staple fighter for quite a while now. It's faster, it has better range, so I like that. It has less firepower though, but more maneuverability. Can carry a slightly heavier bomb. This one has, you know what, no, I don't think that's... Ooh, flying boats have sunk an enemy submarine. Friendly merchants sunk three, enemy merchant sum ships sunk two. Enemy coastal raid on our coast, really. Let's see what they're going to do. Um, yeah, let's attack enemy ships. So here we go. What have we got? We have got quite a couple of ships, actually. So we've got the Langley class carrier over there. Uh, we've got apparently two battle cruisers. That's both of our battle cruisers, I should say. Over here with a couple of destroyers, and then down here more. Well, basically the light squadron with a couple of destroyers and a Richardson, so um, a Raleigh class light cruiser. Well, that's nice. That's also the Raleigh itself. We've got a couple of ships over there. Interesting setup, okay. Um, I think we're gonna call, oh, the Langley is AI controlled, is it? Yeah, right. So uh, let's set up the search pattern. I think, well, why not? Go for Harry Heavy Carrier Patrol. Uh, and that's fine basically to me. Yeah, a couple of our submarines stationed somewhere off coast. That's okay. And yeah, you guys are doing fine. You guys are probably screening for them. Yeah, that's good as well. And you know what? You guys are scouting, but you can do that. Wait a minute. What? That's what? The oh, that's the Richardson and the Raleigh. So these guys are, are separate. And the destroyer squadron is actually this one. And you're on supporting the light cruisers. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, start time then. Can go to 20 knots here with battle cruisers. I think that's going to be all right. Will we get any any reports though? I kind of suspect that we won't for a while. Let's simply run time over here. You can see all of our search craft starting from the Langley class. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to ask the... Ooh. We are going to ask... Hmm. There we go. That was weird. Okay. So the Langley does carry a lot of different things. A couple of fighters. All in all, that's very nice to see. A couple of torpedo bombers as well. And a couple of dive bombers. So... I am going to ask the dive bombers here to set up for naval strike. Your loadout is going to be heavy, actually, I believe. And then we are going to ask these guys to... Ooh, we've got a very nice indication of the range over here. So, yeah, that's another 40 miles that we're losing. But we're going to ask these guys to ready themselves. Yeah, that's fine. So they are now readying... So basically they're being armed and all of that, so they should be ready to attack whenever uh, we do engage with the enemy. Let's see if we do find someone. I'm very curious. Stop. Any reports? No. Okay, let's uh, sail around a little bit. Oh, weird. Where where are they? Ooh, over here a report. One battle cruiser, one destroyer on a southwesterly course. Okay, we're going to try to intercept that. Um, of course, let's go to max speed over here. Um, you guys are independent anyway. Okay, fine. Um, let's actually go to normal speed over here. And over here we've got another battle cruiser and a transport. Okay, let's see uh, what's happening there. So over here somewhere. Let's see. Enemy aircraft are approaching. So they've got a battleship, a uh, battle cruiser. Oh, sorry, a carrier in the area. Stop. Level bombers. Interesting. Where are you? Level bombers are approaching Califor California? Wait a minute. Where is our battle? Where's our battle line? It, we've got these guys. Support force, carrier forces, destroyer. They must be somewhere else. They must be somewhere else, and that's that's horrible. They are under AI control somewhere. Over here, probably. Okay. Yeah, so max speed. Let's see what's going to happen over here. So it's these guys here. Because Hornets, 12 guys. 
No aircraft hit, no aircraft hit. Richardson is firing, so Richardson must be over here. Don't see any hits on us yet, but that doesn't have to say anything. So let's see what our battleships are saying over there. Hopefully they're not being sunk while under AI control. I would really hate that. I'd be I'd be rather pissed, to be honest. Unknown ships firing. Battlecruisers firing at unknown ship. So I suspect that's happening over here. Raleigh class is firing at an unknown ship. It must be this battleship squadron. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, this is our vision range, so we really should be seeing them very soon. What time is it, by the way? Sort of midday? Yeah, sort of midday. So night is very far away. Right, let's try to find the British. California class is firing. Okay, so here is the Rochester. That's one of our our own ship. And this guy is engaged already. And we've got a petrol ship over there. And you know what? We are going to get for to the carrier division over here. And we are going to ask it to prepare these 10 torpedo bombers. Your loadout is going to be torpedoes. 10 of these guys. That's fine. Uh, ready this strike. And the dive bombers are ready already. So soon we're going to ask them to launch. As soon as we have a little bit uh, better knowledge of the enemy position. There's the California. We only have a couple of, a handful, I think three of these battleships. So if these guys, and there's the Colorado. So if these guys are engaged, looks like they didn't take any damage I was supposed to say. And then I do see the Colorado. And it does have, I don't know, it's just a jammed turret. Yeah, and now it's gone. California is firing at an unknown ship, though. Where are you actually firing on? I don't see your turrets being engaged, so... I don't exactly know what's going on over here. But we're soon to find out. We have good, good speed over here, so that should be okay. All of our ships are streaming very fast in this direction. Carrier division is over there. Uh, you know what? What we also can do is take a look at the carrier. So you are ready, you are ready. Let's take these seven torpedo bombers and ready you as well. Just get the maximum that we can. There's the Ernie class, which is a British destroyer. Okay, well, that's interesting. The Colorado can't be can't be firing at this destroyer, can it? God damn it. Please don't engage against a destroyer. And again, your turret is jammed. I'm not sure what you're doing there. Do they only have this small, like, this one destroyer engaging a complete battleship squadron? That'd be kind of hilarious. What have we got down here? Nothing much. Only class. Still, it's only that one ship. Come on. Oh, there's another ship. This one is slower, much slower. Might be damaged already. Or might be a transport ship. An AMC. I don't believe that. Don't believe that for a second. Ooh! Well, that's more interesting. A, an airship tender. That's, that's a very juicy target. Let's try to sink that. So the in independents and constitutions are firing there with their main guns. Hit there with a six inch gun. But the Richardson though. So by this light cruiser. Nothing so far. Yeah, there's 16 inch hit. He's toast. He's basically toast. He's trying to run away very quickly, but he's suffering a lot of damage here. You can see his speed dropping dramatically. And there's also the Ernie class. More heads on this guy. Light damage still, yeah. You know what? Uh, we're going to take the Richardson down here. It's currently in scouting. No, you know what? Scout scouting is fine. I don't want to interrupt the scouts. 
Uh, what we can take though is the Terry support guys here and we're going to be independent not AI controlled line ahead formation that's fine max speed and you're going to get quite close to here and launch maybe some torpedoes right you've suffered a lot of damage okay so what we're going to ask these guys is to hold fire for 10 minutes maybe that's going to work out also this destroyer up here has been damaged very much. Colorado and California are still going up there. More hits on this Serbia class. Okay, you there. Can you launch a torpedo, please, and thank you. The division target is going to be this. Come on, torpedoes. Don't waste all your ammunition on a single ship. Look at all of these hits though. Oh, there's the torpedo. Um, I think I can actually try to get down there. It's a very weird angle for a torpedo though. Uh, and it did pass through the ship. Nope, oh, but there are more torpedoes and I think these two are a little bit more likely to hit. Yeah, there we go. Hit by a torpedo. Uh, please don't go crazy with these though. Um, I don't want you to hit any friendly ship. Right, that being said, I'm not sure that these were really the only ships. I mean the level bombers that we counted earlier, they were certainly not um, sea launched. Heavy damage and fire. Put another torpedo in there also. Six inch guns, three inch guns. I don't mind them shooting because they're not really wasting ammo. But yeah, their BCA Independence is firing again. So yeah, another 10 minutes of stopping to fire, please. Someone, Lawrence, I don't even know where these ships are. Oh, these guys. Okay, our battleships up there are taking a weird course. Oh, was that, was that another torpedo? Yeah. Just look at all of these torpedoes coming in now. Look at that. Oh, a recon. That's very nice. Let's expand that a little bit. Do we see where that is? No, we don't. But yeah, we're shooting down a recon aircraft. That's very nice. I like that. More heads on this guy. He must be really, really having a bad day. Heavy damage and on fire. And there's another torpedo. Yeah, and it does hit. Good. Good. I like that. Stop firing your 16-inch guns on little ships like that. Yes, please do pick up survivors. Let's try to find out if something is down here. Five more minutes. Stop. Enemy aircraft are attacking our battleships. No aircrafts are being hit by that battleship division up there. But they are level bombers, so they must be coming in from where actually? Level bombers. That's weird. It's truly weird. Hornet sea level bombers. Can we get that on the almanac? On the Almanac. Great Britain, sunk ships, national data? No, I don't think it's in here. No, 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 it is, it is, it is. So what we've got over here, so we've got the Hornet Sea. And that is a float plane scout. Really? Very interesting. They might well be coming in from this ship. But that ship again is toast, so... You are being hit, now you are sunk, so that's nice. Yes, let's pick up survivors from the Subia class. Let's see whether there are going to be any more ships, uh, aircraft. We might see some damage to our ships, actually. Uh, especially the ones under AI control. But there's only so much that we can do about that. 78 survivors over there. 
what's that? Ke, okay, not that important. All right, let's accelerate time a little bit here because I don't know whether there's anything more. And then these three reports. I mean, they did report battle cruisers. I'm really not sure they were truly battle cruisers. They might just be a fluke. Or our battleships did engage them, and they are now way up in the north. Now we can probably drop down the speed a little bit over here. Otherwise, our carriers will fall behind too, too much. Let's follow behind our battleships there. Don't think we have seen any reports. And it's night now, so yeah, let's go to Ultra. Don't think we are going to stumble into any enemy, otherwise it will get really messy. Yeah, and we didn't even launch our aircraft. But you know what, that's okay. Our air carriers are there, I appreciate that, so you're closer to the coast. Yeah, and that should probably be it. We did sink two ships, very big ones, but I do like to sink uh, AVs though, so that's that's a very good result over there for us. Right, no contacts, come on, and the battle. Yes. To Rochester is torpedoes, we are lost a submarine. So what's happening here? We did lose an auxiliary and a submarine. They lost a destroyer and an auxiliary. There was a battle cruiser, but we don't know where it was. And we can't zoom in now. I did take light damage actually. So let's look at the ship details here. And let's look at the invincible lock entries. Okay, so you were fighting against the Colorado and California, and you are suffering pretty badly. Actually, I don't see you hitting anything. Yeah, the Colorado and California did some really good damage over here. Some very nice hits with the 16-inch guns. Yeah, and the Sabia, that was carrying 18 aircrafts in two catapults, lots of flooding, two torpedo hits, lots of medium hits, lots of heavy hits, so yeah. Very lovely to see that. So, um, we are going to leave the scenario over here. We're going to enjoy our victory points. We, yeah, well, why not? Okay, um, we are still losing some money, but I think that's going to be all right as this stuff turns out. Otherwise, we'll have to pause the construction of some ships. Uh, we have suffered some damage to the Rochester. Nothing too major, though, so that's fine. Yeah, and all in all, we are still in war against the UK. Very close with the Soviets joining over here. Um, but yeah, hopefully we are going to get a hold of these guys over there. We certainly do dominate the seas over here. The British do have a carry over here, curiously enough. Uh, everything they ha everything else, they probably move back to Great Britain, uh, which is just swell. Enter the Mediterranean, so they might be trying to send some forces down here towards Southeast Asia. We'll have to see, though. There's probably a radar up here. But yeah, uh, time is, I'm, I'm way over time here, actually. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Do leave a like and all of that if you want. Bye-bye.